Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to repair or replace a boat's macerator pump. Now one of the key causes of problems with a macerator is not using quick dissolving toilet paper. Uh, so number one, don't use regular toilet paper in a boat's head. It will definitely cause you issues. So the macerator that we're working on is on a 27 foot sea hunt. Now immediately looking at all of that salt crustacean in between uh, the motor itself and the impeller housing, it's very easy to diagnose that, that this pump is shot. But if you didn't know what was wrong, there's three steps. Step one, there's a little screwed uh, head on the back of most of these pumps. You can turn that with a flathead screwdriver. That turns the whole shaft, the impeller and the blades, and it will dislodge anything, if, if anything, as those blades jammed. Step two would be to take the pump off, take a look at the impeller inside that uh, top housing, and replace the impeller, very inexpensive. And step three is what we're gonna do, which is to be replace the entire uh, pump itself. Now this is a shore flow pump. There's not a lot of room to work uh, most of the times, uh, you know, on these units. I'm just gonna disconnect it from the bulkhead, and then I'm gonna disconnect the hoses. Sometimes getting these hoses off of the pump are very, is very difficult. You can use a heat gun to soften them up a bit and then they usually pop right off. So now the pump has been removed from the bulkhead. I've left the wires attached. I'm gonna take this apart as if I was gonna take a look at the impeller or replace the impeller. So I'm just gonna remove that top housing cap, a little gasket there. These are the chopping blades, and you can see that, that that whole shaft is completely frozen on this one. You can remove the nut, and then what I like to do is just remove both of these blades together in the right orientation, so you don't even have to think about how they go back together later. The steel plate comes off, there's a gasket on the bottom, and you can see in this case that, that impeller is, is practically brand new. If there was an issue, you'd see some of those um, arms broken off. But when I remove the impeller housing, you can see that, that this whole motor is completely shot. Just salt water got in there and everything corroded. So I replaced it with a Jabsco, not because I like the Jabsco better than the Sureflow. This is just what they had in stock, and they both are, are gonna perform the same function. Fortunately, the alignment of the screw holes into the bulkhead are identical. Just has two wires, a red and a black. It's got an inflow and an outflow. Let's take a look at the back of the housing. This is that screwdriver slot I was telling you about earlier. So if you have a, a macerator pump that's making noise, like it's, it wants to turn, but it's just jammed, you can usually free up whatever's got it jammed just with a screwdriver before you even uh, disconnect it or unscrew it from the bulkhead. You can see here when I when I turn that screwdriver, let's see if I can get it lined up with the camera, I'm actually turning the impeller as well as the blades. So to install this, it's a very simple process. I'm gonna attach uh, the rubber feet or the grommets. These really help with the vibration. I'm gonna use some um, heat shrink connections, electrical connections. These are uh, crimped connections that you then uh, use a heat gun and a heat shrink. In addition to those, I'm going to slide some additional heat shrink wrap uh, onto each wire. So each connection is actually going to be uh, heat shrunk twice. My feeling is it just helps keep the salt water environment uh, away from that connection and it, it does actually provide a little bit of a stronger connection if there's any vibrations or if at any time there's any pull on that wire. So these fittings are, are like I said before, crimped and then I use a heat gun and just shrink that wrap. I'm going to slide the additional uh, heat shrink tubing over that connection and then I'll just repeat the process. Now that, now that it's wired up, I'm gonna test it, make sure that it works. So I'm just gonna turn on my main battery switch. I've already got the switch to the macerator in the on position. And I can see that by looking down 
the inlet tube, I can see that uh, macerator blade's turning when I turn the switch on. So that pump is working. I'm going to use the heat gun to soften uh, the new tubing that I'm going to uh, put over the nipples. Uh, getting these things on, on those nipples without heating it up can really be a chore. This stuff is very stiff. Um, you're always going to want to use um, two hose clamps on any fittings that are below the waterline. You want to have those in opposite directions. And then I like to stung them up with a screwdriver, but then I like to go back with a wrench and tighten up each one of those hose clamps uh, with a small wrench. Once the unit is um, attached to the bulkhead again and all of the hose clamps are snugged up, I filled up the holding tank on the head and uh, gave it a test. Now I had previously uh, cleaned out the whole system before I even started working on it with fresh water um, and sucked it out at the local pump station uh, like three or four times before I pulled the boat out of the water. The boat's out of the water right now and I'm just going to let it you know, pump out uh, into, into my driveway just to confirm that everything's working. And that's really it. A very simple, easy way of checking, uh, repairing, uh, and or replacing the macerator pump on your boat uh, or RV. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I ask that you please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. I've got a bunch of do-it-yourself projects uh, for the boater um, and fishermen. So take a look and check that out. I, and once again, thank you for watching.